Algorand, uh, it solves, so that's the, the, the company, the team of cryptographers, mathematicians, engineers, so on, that challenged the blockchain trilemma. So let's break it down in terms of achieving scalability. How do we achieve scalability? in the space of blockchain, in the space of cryptocurrency. Okay, so uh, scalability, security, remember, and uh, decentralization, yes, right? So yeah. that's what, what you want. What's the best way to approach? Can we break it down? Let's start with scalability and think about how do we achieve it? Well, to achieve it at a, one at a time is uh, um, uh, perhaps easy. Even security, if nobody transacts, nobody loses money. So that is secure, but it's not uh, scalable. <laughs> so point. let me tell you, I'm a cryptographer, so I, so I try to um, fight the bad guys. And uh, what you, what you want is that a vessel ledger that we discussed before uh, cannot be tampered with. So you must think of it that uh, is a special ink that nobody can erase. Okay. Then it has to be uh, everybody should be able uh, to read and not to alter the, the pages or the content of the pages. That's okay. But you know what? That is actually easy cryptographically. Easy cryptographically means you can use tools invented 50 years ago, which in cryptographic time is prehistory, okay? We are <laughs> cavemen working around yes. and solve that problem in cryptography land. But, you know, but there is a really a fundamental problem, which is really a, almost a social, seems a political problem, is to say, who the hell chooses or publishes the next page on the ledger? I mean, that is really the challenge. This ledger, you can always add a page because more and more transactions are to be written on there. And somebody has to assemble this, this transaction, put them on a page, and add the next page. Who is the somebody who chooses the page and adds it on? Who can be trusted to do it? Exactly. Assume it is me for the time being, right? not that I won't volunteer for the job, but then I would have more power than any absolute monarch in history because I would have a tremendous power to say, these are the transactions that the entire world should see, and whatever I don't write, this transaction will never see the light of day. I mean, no one had any such a power in history. So it's very important to, uh, to do that. And that is the quintessential problem in a blockchain, and uh, people have thought about it to say, it's not me, it's not you, but for instance, in uh, proof of work, what people say is they say, okay, it's not me, it's not you, you know what it is? We make a very difficult, we invent an, a cryptographic puzzle, very hard to solve. The first one to solve it has the right to add one page to the ledger on behalf of everybody else. And that's now, is, seems okay, because, you know, Sometimes I solve a puzzle before you do. Sometimes you solve it before I do or before somebody else, somebody else solves it. It's okay. And presumably the effort you put in is somehow correlated with how much trust uh, you should be given to add to the ledger. Yeah. So somehow you want to make sure that you, know, you need to work because you want to prevent, you want to make sure that you, know, you get a one solution every 10 minutes, say, like in, in, the, in particular example of Bitcoin, so that it is very rare that two pages are added at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because if I solve a puzzle at the same time you do, it could happen that, if it happens once or twice, we can survive it. But if it happens, you know, every other page, you know, is a double page, uh, then uh, which uh, of the two is the real page, it becomes a problem. So that's why in Bitcoin, it is important that to have a substantial amount of work so that no many how many people try on earth to solve a puzzle, you have one solution out of how many people are trying every 10 minutes so that you have you distantiate these pages and you have the time to propagate through the network a solution and the page attached to it. And therefore, there is one page at a time that is added. And they say, well, why don't we do that? We have a solution. Well, first of all, a page every 10 minutes is not fast enough. So it's a question of scalability. And second of all, to ensure that no matter how many people try, you get a one page every 10 minutes, one solution to the riddle every 10 minutes. This means that uh, the riddle becomes very, very hard. And uh, to, to have a chance to solve it 
in within 10 minutes. You must have such an expensive apparatus in terms of specialized computers, not one, not two, but thousands and thousands of them. And they produce a tons of heat, okay? This is dissipate heat like a maniac. And then you have to refrigerate them too. And so then now you have air conditioning uh, galore to add to the thing. It becomes so expensive that fewer and fewer and fewer people can actually compete in order to add to the page. And uh, the problem becomes uh, so so uh, so um, crucial that you know in uh, in uh, in Bitcoin, um, depending on which day of the week you look at it, you are going to have uh, two or three mining pools are really the ones uh, uh, capable of controlling the chain. So you're and, saying that's uh, that's almost like uh, leads to centralization, right? It started being decentralized. And uh, but the expenses become higher and higher and higher when the uh, cost becomes uh, higher and higher. Fewer and fewer people can afford them, and then you know it becomes you know de facto centralized, right? Yeah. And uh, and a different type of approach uh, is instead, for instance, a delegated proof of stake, which is also very easy to explain. Uh, essentially, boils down to to say, well, uh, look at these uh, twenty-one people. Say, okay. Uh, don't they look honest? Uh, yes, they do. In fact, I believe that they're going to remain honest for the foreseeable future. So why don't we do ourselves a favor? Let's entrust them to add the page on behalf of all of us to the ledger. Okay. Okay. But now we are going to say, is this centralized or decentralized? Well, 21 is better than one. <laughs> what to say is very little. So if you look at... Uh, when people rebelled to centralized power, I don't know, the French revolutions, okay? Mm -hmm. There was a monarch and the nobles. Yes. Uh, were there 21 nobles? No, there were thousands of them, but there were millions and millions of uh, disempowered uh, citizens. So one is centralized, 21 is also centralized, right? So that's delegated proof of stake. Delegated it's Kind of like representative democracy, I guess. Yes. Which is good. It's working great, right? It's, right. <laughs> it's working great. Well, it's better than uh, it's the better single than monarch, monarch yes. right? And uh, but uh, there's and there's problems. There are uh, problems. Yeah. And uh, and so um, uh, we were looking for a different uh, uh, when uh, thinking about Algon for a for a different approach. And so we have uh, an approach in that you know, is really, really decentralized because uh, essentially uh, in, uh, it works as follows. So you have a bunch of tokens, right? These are the tokens uh, that have equal power and you have, say, 10 billions of tokens distributed um, um, uh, to the entire world. And the owners, each token has a chance to add the ledger, equal probability like everybody else. In fact, actually, if you want, here is how it works. So think about, you know, by some magic cryptographic process, which is not magic, it's mathematics, but think of it as magic. Assume that you select a thousand tokens and so sometimes are random, okay? And you have a guarantee that they're random selected. And then this the owners of these 1,000 tokens somehow agree on the next page they all sign it, and uh, that is the next page. Okay, so it is clear that you know nobody has the power, but you know uh, once a, 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 in a while one of your tokens is selected, and uh, you are in charge of this committee to select the next page. But this goes around very quickly. So, and if you look at this, the, the question really is uh, that it's not really centralized. And uh, because of what for for agreeing on the same page, it is important that the one thousand tokens that you randomly selected are in honest hands, the majority of them. So, which if the majority of the tokens are in honest hands, that is essentially true. Because if the majority of the tokens are in honest hands, if you select, um, um, say, ninety percent of the people are uh, um, uh, um, ninety percent of the tokens are in honest hands. So can you randomly select a thousand? In this thousand, you, you find the 501 uh, 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 tokens in bad hands. 
very, very improbable. So, so basically, uh, when a large fraction of people are honest, then you can use randomness as a powerful tool to get decentralization. Correct. So, so what does honesty mean? And uh, now we're into the social side of things, which is uh, how do we know that like the fraction, the, a large fraction of uh, people or participating parties are honest? That is an, an excellent question. So by the way, first of all, we should realize that the same thing is for every other system. When you look at proof of work, you rely that the majority of the mining power is in honest hands. Yes. When you look at a delegated proof of stake, you re rely that the majority of these 21 people are honest. What is the difference? The difference is that uh, in these other systems, you should to say the whole economy is secure if the majority of this small piece of economy are honest. Mm. And that is our big question. But instead, what we, in, in Algorand, in our approach, we say the whole economy is secure if the majority of the economy is honest. In other words, who can subvert Algorand? It's not a majority of a small group, but it's a majority of the token holders had to conspire with each other in order to sink the very economy for which they own the majority of. Yes, that, so I think, it is a bit harder to... Like a self-destructive majority, yes. essentially. And you're also making me realize that Basically, every system that we have in the world today assumes that the majority of participants is honest. Yes, the only difference is the majority of whom. And in, in some right, cases, right. the majority of a club, and in our case, is the majority of the whole system. The whole the whole system. Okay, so that's, that's fast. So through that kind of uh, random uh, sampling, you can achieve decentralization you can achieve, so the scalability, I understand, and then the security that you're referring to, basically the security comes from the fact that the sample selected would uh, likely include honest people. So it's very difficult to, so by the way, the, the security as you, as you mentioned, that you're referring to is basically security against dishonesty, right, or manipulation or whatever. Yes, yes. So essentially, then what you're going to, to do is to the following, say, say, well, Silvio, I understood what you're saying, but somebody has to randomly select these tokens, then I believe you, so then right. who does this random selection? That's a good point. And uh, in, uh, in Algorand, we do something a little bit unorthodox. Essentially, is the token choose themselves at random. And you say, if you think about it, that seems to be a terrible idea. Because <laughs> if you want to say, choose yourself at random and whoever chooses himself is a thousand people committee, you choose the page for, for, the, for the rest of us. Mm -hmm. And because if I'm a bad person, I'm going to select myself over and over again because I want to be part of the committee every single time. But uh, not so fast. So what do we do in Algorand? What does it mean that I select myself? That each one of us in the privacy of our own computer, actually a laptop, what you do is that you execute your own individual lottery. And uh, think about it that you pull a lever of a slot machine. You can only pull the lever once, not un until you win, <laughs> not enough times until you win. And uh, when you pull the lever, case one, either you win, in such a case you have a winning ticket, or you lose, you don't get any winning ticket. So. If you don't have a winning ticket, you can say anything you want about the next page in the ledger, nobody pays attention. But if you have a winning ticket, people say, oh, wow, this is one of the 1,000 winning tickets. We better pay attention to what he or she says. And that's how it works. And the, the lottery is a cryptographic lottery, which means that even if I am an entire nation, extremely powerful, with incredible computing powers, I don't have the ability to improve even minimally my probability of one of my token winning the lottery. And uh, that's how it happens. So everybody pulls the lever. The 1,000 random winners say, oh, here is my winning ticket and here is my opinion up or down about the block. These are the ones that count. And if you think about it, while this is distributed, because there is, in the case of Algon, there is a 
10 billion tokens and you select a, a, a thousand of them more distributed than this, you cannot get. And then uh, why is this you know, scalable? Because what do you have to do? Okay, you have to do the lottery. How long the lottery takes? It takes actually one microsecond. Whether you have one token or two tokens or a billion tokens is always one microsecond of computation, which is very fast. We don't hit the planet with a microsecond of computation. And, and finally, why is this secure? Because even if I were a very evil and very, very powerful individual, I'm so powerful that I can corrupt anybody I want instantaneously in the world, whom would I want to corrupt? the people in the committee, so that I can choose the page of the ledger. But I do have a problem. I do not know whom I should corrupt. Should I corrupt this lady in Shanghai, this other guy in Paris? Because I don't know. I should. The winners are random, so I don't know whom I should corrupt. But once the winner come forward and say, here is my winning ticket, and you propagate your winning ticket across the network together with your opinion about the block, now I know who they are. For sure, I can corrupt all thousand of them given to my incredible powers. But so what? Whatever they said, they already said, and their winning tickets and their opinions are virally propagated across the network. And I do not have the power, no more than the US government or any government has the power, to put back in the bottle a message virally propagated by WikiLeaks.